Hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and I'm here with a follow-up on our last episode. In that episode I looked at the Isle of May observation from Miles Davis that showed the lighthouse over the horizon, demonstrating very clearly that the horizon is below level at the observation height, proving the globe Earth in a response to a challenge by Antonio Subarats. Now Antonio put out a video the next day pointing out the fact that my level wasn't perfectly level and uh, he and his flat tired friends had a great deal of fun at my expense. Thanks. Unfortunately that brought out the 12 year old in me and I decided to make that smug prick eat his words. So let's have a look and see what he had to say about my video. How to fudge a test and then get exposed by Bob the Science Guy. Here he has a level on a pagoda. Look, he's going to look at the horizon. Let's see, make sure it's level. Make sure it's level. Let's see. Hey, that, that was a bit, uh, that was a bit brief. Didn't quite get to establish whether or not that was level. I wonder if he'll go back to it. I wonder if he'll go back to it just to show us that it really is level. No, no, he isn't. He isn't going back to it. That's a shame. It's okay. We're going to look at it in a minute. We went out to the Mackinac Bridge between Michigan's Upper and Lower Peninsula. We're at the southern end at the State Park where the lighthouse used to be. We have a four-foot spirit level with a couple of pennies on it to give us a very accurate sighting to the horizon. And even with this rather crude equipment, you can clearly see the level line of sight is pointing towards the sky. It is well above the horizon. Let's take a closer look. Let's see whether the bubble is in the center between the two lines. Oh, look at that. It isn't. Good heavens, it's a good job you're not Bob the Builder. You'd be building Tower of Pisa all over again. Well, yeah, that's all in good fun. And having a look at the level again, I saw that it was a little bit off and a little bit cockeyed. I did some experiments on a level dining room table and uh, calculated out the number of pennies that it would take to create that error again and such. And I came to the conclusion that I was just going to have to withdraw that observation because it just was not at the level of precision I needed. So even though there was no attempt to deceive or do anything like that, it wasn't my best work. And Antonio, you called me on it, and you were right. I had to withdraw the observation. But before we go on, let's go ahead and review your challenge to prove the spherical Earth. Now... You see, if I hold this like this, you have a right angle. This is a line that goes to the radius. It goes to the center of the Earth. It's the radius of the Earth. This is how you establish a right angle on a sphere because you can't establish a right angle on a sphere because it's impossible due to the surface that's being met, being curved and not flat. So you have to project an imaginary vertical and then an imaginary tangential line at right angles. That would be this. This would be the horizon, the uh, globe level. Okay, so here's a horizon or a level line on a globe. It's perpendicular or a 90 degree angle to the radius of the Earth. This is the level that a spirit level measures, assuming, of course, you have the bubble in the middle. In your globe, you have to project a line from the center of the Earth going through the surface to do a right angle. This right angle in the real world is your horizontal line. In your globe, it's not your horizontal line, it's merely right angles to a straight line. Your horizontal line drops from that right angle and it drops to the horizon at some point because you can't have the horizon being on this line because that would mean, well, that the Earth was flat. Okay, he keeps skipping back with his terms. So we have the radius line and then we have the perpendicular horizontal level. Then we have this angled line going from our observation point to the horizon. It's a tangent line to the surface of the Earth. Now the key point here is that this tangent line that goes down to the horizon angles down on a globe Earth, yet it is on the level horizontal line on a flat Earth. So this is what happens. Now if you raise the elevation of the camera you make this green line shallower, okay? So you make the bulge smaller. You, see, you can see if I place the camera here, if the target is still here, there will be only a tiny sliver of drop over here, okay? 
Okay, so once again, we have the perpendicular level line to the radius of the Earth, and then we're looking downward towards the horizon, where that tangent line touches the surface of the Earth is the actual horizon. Now we see that if we have a target beyond it, you see how we intercept that target. And when we raise our observation or eye level, that tangent line becomes a little steeper and turns downward even more than the first one did. So fudging your figures to try to arrive at some other uh, uh, representation of the real world, because this representation doesn't work, fails in the rest of the representation because as you raise this higher your drop your horizon drop has to increase although we rather smugly suggest that we have to fudge our figures in order to make this work this is actually how it works I have no problem with it at all and yes as we increase our observation height the angle down to the horizon increases if this was actually true there would be a way of proving it if instead this was more like true, there'd be a way of proving that. Well, I do believe there is. On a globe Earth, the horizon will be below the level. And on a flat Earth, the horizon will rise to meet the level. How can we test which of these it might be? Well, here I have a red tube. If you angle it down from an elevation, so choose your elevation you can make it from ground level if you want you won't really discern much make it from the top of a mountain angle it down to the horizon okay fix it angled down to the horizon look through this end you should if your theory is true see the horizon and then leaving this red tube fixed if you come to this side and look the opposite way well, can you see how that's veering away from the land, whereas this veers towards the land? Well, when you're looking from this direction, you should be looking up into the sky. Now let's review this real quick. On the left, of course, we have a spherical Earth. And what he is saying that if you look at a level horizontal line drawn perpendicular to the radius of the Earth, on a sphere, you must look downward to the horizon. Now, what he's not telling you is that he has an extremely poor understanding of basic geometry. Because if you look down from a level line to the horizon on a sphere, if you shoot that line backwards, you are looking above the level and into the sky. On a flat plane, if you see the horizon on one side, you, by definition, must see the horizon on the other side. It's impossible to get that sort of an angle. So, if you look downward at the horizon, you, by definition, have to find a sphere. Very fact that the horizon is below the level in one direction requires it to be below the level in the other direction. And the only shape that will satisfy that requirement is a sphere. Now, if instead the Earth is flat and horizon means horizontal, like the word suggests, okay, then taking a thin tube to the top of a mountain, placing it so you can see the horizon, fixing it, looking through this way, seeing the horizon, then over here to look this way through the green tube, if you also see the horizon, it means that the horizon is not part of a curved Earth. Once again, here's what he's saying. If your horizon is level with that perpendicular line, you are on a flat Earth. If it is below that perpendicular line, you are on a curved Earth. It is very simple. So, globe Earthers, Rather than earn your money through critique, how about you go and you show something? Well, Mr. Unearned Smugness, I was going to go out and repeat my experiment, but Rory beat me to it. Y'all know that water always finds level, don't you?
Hey, Antonio, do you like fruit? How about them apples? Now, I'll expect an apology and an admission on your page that the earth is a sphere. I've met your challenge. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Happy New Year to everybody.